Hi, everybody. Welcome to Reduce Operating Costs with Solar Energy. I'm Tim Montague. I'm going to give people a few minutes to get logged into the meeting this afternoon. This is part of our monthly series called Solar Works for Illinois. And solar energy is so new in the Midwest in general that there's a great need for education on the subject. So uh, that's what motivated me and uh, Continental to launch this series. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Really excited to share some of the projects that Continental has done in the solar PV industry here in Illinois. Just giving people a few minutes here and we'll get cooking. All right, well, we'll get started and people can uh, join us as they, <clears throat> as they can. Again, I'm Tim Montague. I do solar PV sales and business development for Continental Electrical Construction Company here in Oak Brook, Illinois in the Chicago suburbs. And today's webinar is Reduce Operating Costs with Solar Energy, Five Ways That Solar Pays Back. Here's an outline of the talk today. It's gonna to take about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, and then we'll get you on your way to uh, the rest of your day. So we're gonna talk about why solar uh, is happening now, especially here in the Midwest, what it is, and what some of the recent projects are that Continental has done. We've done 12 megawatts of solar rooftop and ground mount photovoltaics. We're going to talk about energy savings, cash incentives, tax credits, and accelerated depreciation. Those are the main ways that solar creates ROI. And then I'll give you some tips on who can benefit from solar, and we'll do some Q&A. Before I launch into the main topic, I want to give people a little background on Continental. Continental is a 106-year-old fourth generation family business founded by uh, David and Stephen Witz's great grandfather, Harry Witz in 1912 here in Chicago, just when electrification was happening. And so Continental has deep roots in energy transitions. And that's what we're looking at today with uh, distributed energy. That's what we call solar photovoltaics is a uh, source of distributed energy because you put it on your facility or on your ground. We are the largest employer of union electricians here in uh, Chicagoland. And we started the energy division or the energy solutions division in 2009, really started building projects in 2011. So it's a, it's a new addition, but we are an early adopter for electrical contractors getting into solar in the Midwest. And now we're very well positioned to take advantage of the wave of projects that is hitting Illinois thanks to the Future Energy Jobs Act, which I'll mention briefly uh, throughout the webinar today. And that is funding $200 million in subsidies every year for the next decade. That's going to fuel a 30-fold increase in solar in Illinois. We are the largest solar contractor or EPC in Illinois. And uh, so we're, like I said, we're well positioned to uh, fulfill the demand that is about to, uh, well, it's starting to ramp up already. We are a full service electrical construction company. And um, one of our core values is customer for life. And, and I really uh, see that in the day-to-day -day work that uh, the hundred colleagues of mine here in the office do. And when I go to uh, job sites and see the, the workers on site, the quality of the work that they're doing. We do not take a one and done approach. We're taking a, um, how can we serve our customer best and then do that for many uh, years and decades to come. An example of that is the Sears or Willis Tower that you see in the background photo here. Continental built the electrical system in the Sears Tower and has had a constant presence in that facility since 1973. So we have a bunch of happy customers in that building. And you can imagine a building that's uh, you know, 40 plus years old is, is constantly being renovated 
and reinventing itself from the inside out, and we're part of that. You see here a, a pretty big list of the types of projects that we do, and um, that includes, of course, energy solutions. That's our renewable energy division, low voltage, mission critical, that's data centers, healthcare, including hospitals, hospitality, hotels, etc. And so if you have any electrical construction needs, please contact Continental. You can reach us at www.cecco.com. So the Energy Solutions Division uh, has a couple of core services. Commercial industrial solar is uh, job one. We install rooftop solar, ground mount solar, uh, parking garages, uh, building integrated. There's a variety of forms and I'm going to show you some examples of, of solar arrays today. And then solar plus storage. You see this in the news a lot today because batteries are also technology that have become affordable and provide many uh, revenue streams to a system owner. Of course they produce backup power but they also provide grid services. And so as you see in the news especially about Tesla and we have done a Tesla project, which I'm going to show you. Uh, storage is becoming a bigger and bigger part of the energy grid and the energy playground. And um, it pairs very well with solar because you uh, store some of the energy that you capture with the solar array in the battery, and then you can use that when the sun isn't shining. We also install electrical vehicle chargers. There's a uh, a massive transformation that is about to occur in the transportation industry in the United States and globally. We are moving away from internal combustion engine cars to electric vehicles. And, um, and so we're going to need a lot more EV chargers and then microgrids. And all that means is you have a, a source of power. It could be a solar array. It could be a generator. You have a storage device like a battery. And then you have the switch gear to uh, island that system in the case of a grid outage. So we have a solar plus storage uh, facility here at our office in Oak Brook. And if the grid goes down, uh, the array will automatically shut down for five minutes, but then the battery will uh, reboot the inverters and then we can use the energy from that array uh, during the outage. Most solar arrays don't have batteries attached to them and so they are automatically shut off uh, for safety reasons, for grid safety reasons, for first responders. And so you can't leverage the, uh, the solar PV in the event of a grid outage unless you have a microgrid. And as we've seen with uh, the situation this past fall <clears throat> with hurricanes, and especially Puerto Rico where the grid was severely damaged, there's now a lot of talk about the importance of microgrids and solar plus storage. So there's a, uh, a, literally a tipping point that we are on the doorstep of here with solar plus storage, which is uh, going to grow tr tremendously. So what is solar PV and why, especially now, is it taking off? Uh, you know, solar has been around since 1954. It was invented at Bell Labs in New Jersey. And so it's very mature technology. It's 60 years old. But it wasn't until the early 2000s that prices really uh, started to drop and become quote unquote affordable. And so uh, it was, and I have a graph of that in a slide or two, but so it's, it's really a combination of things uh, driven by the reduction in price of technology and then adoption starting to pick up. And as we get that mass adoption, that drives further price reductions and you get a perfect storm. So here's a, a sketch of, of a building with a solar array on it. You can see the array is a, a set of black panels. They convert the sun's energy into electricity. This is semiconductor technology. So it, uh, it is manufactured by many of the same companies that make smartphones uh, or other consumer electronics, you know, LG, Samsung, et cetera. These are household names. <clears throat> The power comes off the array, as we call a collection of solar cells or uh, solar modules, in DC format, that's direct current, and then it goes to this green box here, which is an inverter, and is converted from DC to AC. And that allows uh, us to use it in the facility, 
then it's feeding into the panel box for the, uh, for the facility, and it's feeding into the load of the building, uh, producing power for the lights, uh, TVs, refrigerators, outlets, etc. And then excess power is going out, you see these green arrows here, onto the grid. And so a well-designed system will overproduce in the summertime, and so you are sending extra electrons out to the grid. Over the course of the year, the array is designed to produce 100%, 90 to 100% of what the facility uses. That's in a perfect world. So solar PV converts sunlight to electricity, and you're taking sunlight from the roof or the ground in DC form that's coming off the array, converting it to AC with an inverter, and then using it in the building load. And so it reduces the kilowatt hour consumption of the building. And that's plain and simple, the greatest value proposition that solar PV holds is it reduces the operating costs of a facility. If you're spending $1,000 a month, you could reduce that by 50 to 75% with a well-designed solar system. If you're paying $10,000 a month for a commercial or industrial facility, the same thing. You could reduce that bill by 75%. You can't get rid of all the charges with solar because you still have to be connected to the grid. So you have demand charges and capacity charges. And uh, so you can't reduce the bill to zero. Although of course there is off grid solutions. And so let's say you have a cabin in the woods and that's kind of where solar got its start was with more remote applications and of course satellites because it was, uh, too expensive for everyday applications. There are types of uh, solar that I'm gonna show you, including roof mount, ground, and building integrated. And it is a very fast growing industry. It's one of the fastest growing industries in the United States and globally. Solar installers and wind turbine technicians are the two fastest growing jobs. Here's a graph showing the price per watt in the left hand side that in the 1970s was around uh, a, over a dollar a watt. Oh, sorry, a hundred dollars a watt. And now we're in the 2016, past the 2015 here, we're less than a dollar a watt. So we've seen a massive decline and you see that really it started in the, uh, in the 2000s that, well, sorry, in the late 90s that, uh, the price really got into this range of a few dollars a watt that was affordable. And then on the right-hand side, you see the uh, global uh, consumption of, uh, or global growth of solar installations. And, and it mimics the, uh, the price drop. So as the price comes down, adoption grows. This graph shows us what's going on in the United States. Again, on the left, we see the cost. The, this is the installed cost of uh, PV dollars per watt was around uh, 750 a watt in 2009, and now we're around $1.50 a watt on average. So a very steep decline. Solar's declined 75% since 2010. And that really has driven adoption and growth of the industry. And you can see here that we are installing uh, upwards of, uh, you know, 10 to 14,000 megawatts DC in the United States of solar PV every year. And so if you go to the coasts, go to California, you go to Arizona, Colorado, uh, and then on the East Coast, New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, North Carolina, you see solar everywhere. Those states, pay much more for electricity, and that has uh, ma made them be earlier adopters. We have very cheap power here in the Midwest, and that is a challenge uh, for solar PV, but we've now reached uh, a subsidy level, in, especially in Illinois with the Future Energy Jobs Act, where uh, solar is now going head to head with, with other power sources, and there, um, there are real good reasons why commercial industrial facilities are starting to install solar en masse. And we're gonna see a 30-fold increase of the installed solar PV in Illinois in the next decade. So we have a little less than 100 megawatts today in Illinois. And in, by 2030, we're gonna have an additional 3,000 megawatts. 
So it's a 30-fold increase uh, in solar PV here in Illinois. So a lot of solar developers are moving into Illinois. And uh, of course, there's going to be many job opportunities for electricians and the related trades that are building both rooftop and ground mount solar. So let's talk about some recent solar projects. This is the eye candy portion of the uh, presentation, and then I'm gonna get into the ROI. But I'm gonna talk about, uh, just briefly, about four projects that Continental has done recently. And you see them listed here, Grace Lake High School in Lake County, uh, that's on the north side of Chicago, and then Clark Environmental uh, in the western suburbs, Apt Electronics uh, on the north side of Cook County, and then Ikea Joliet, which is our largest project to date, although we recently signed a, a larger project, a 3.5 megawatt project. So the Ikea Joliet was a, a fantastic project for us, and it is the largest rooftop array in Illinois to date. Here's a map showing some of the projects we've done. Continental has built over 50 solar projects. So uh, didn't want to try to put all of those on the map. These are just some of our uh, better projects that we like to talk about and show off. But you see it's clustered in, in Chicagoland and we have done a, a few projects downstate now in uh, Champaign County as well, one at the University of Illinois. And uh, as, uh, as these 3,000 megawatts of solar roll out in the next decade, we're going to see uh, this map change dramatically and it'll uh, get filled out. The whole state is going to get solar, uh, both rooftop and ground mount. So here's the, uh, the ground mount portion of Grays Lake North. And in the bottom part of the slide, you see two rooftops. So there's a, a north and a south high school. And all said, uh, these, these schools installed 2.8 megawatts of solar, including this 1.4 megawatt uh, ground mount array. And so it's 1,400 kW, that's uh, 1,400 kW or 1 1.4 megawatts. That's the DC size of the array. The panels are putting out DC power, and so we typically will measure the size of an array in DC power, but it, it corresponds to an AC value as well that's a little lower. And uh, here I'm just giving you a little information about the types of panels. This was a square D 330 watt panel. It's approximately two acres. This was a little mound in the middle of a wetland uh, that allowed us to uh, install the racking. The racking is just metal piles that are driven into the ground. So there's really no permanent damage to the land. It's just steel into the ground. And uh, the array is gonna be there for 25 years. It's very robust technology that is designed to be outdoors and withstand rain, hail, snow, sleet, freezing and cooling and hot temperatures, et cetera. So it is, it is well guarded against the weather and it degrades at a very slow rate and that degradation rate is declining as the technology gets better and better. Uh, tier one solar panels, which is all we deal in, will degrade at around a quarter percent to half a percent per year. So at the 25, year lifespan or at the end of the 25 year lifespan of a solar array, it's still producing well over 75, sometimes upwards of 90% for very, uh, very high performing panels. So it's very robust and it's uh, a long-term investment. Oh, I should say, All right. Here we have Clark Environmental in St. Charles, and this is their uh, headquarters. This was a lead silver retrofit, and so solar fit into that process very well of trying to attain a lead certification. You can see they have really three types of uh, solar array. They have a, a rooftop array, which is ballasted. That's just weighed down with concrete blocks. There's no roof penetrations. And, uh, and then they have an awning on the front side of the building here, which you can see it's just a thin row of solar panels that are attached to the side of the building. And they provide some shade to the uh, windowed offices and of course producing electricity and making the solar array more visible because when you're on the ground, you cannot see up onto, the, onto this roof or many roofs, right? And Clark 
has sustainability in their DNA and they really wanted to show off the fact that they were making this investment in becoming green and sustainable. And then the icing on the cake here is the carport array, which you see here, which has EV chargers nestled underneath it. And um, we do a lot of carports. Carports do come at a premium. Uh, so there, it's a, it's a non-trivial investment, but um, it's a beautiful way to show off your interest in renewable energy. And then you see a Google Earth view or Google Maps view of this building showing the size of the array relative to the building. And, you know, they filled up that roof pretty well. You'll notice that we don't build, uh, we don't put the array where there are obstructions like rooftop units. These are uh, HVAC equipment, vents, and so forth. And so that does impact the ability to solarize a facility. You want to have a few, as few obstructions as possible, but we can certainly work around obstructions and we're used, used to doing that. Retrofit rooftop arrays is kind of our bread and butter. And then uh, we also do new construction, of course, and, and ground mount. This was uh, self-financed. There are many ways to finance solar. We're gonna have a, 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 our next webinar actually coming up in March is gonna be dedicated to solar finance. You can do a cash deal, right, where you're just paying for the system outright, or you're uh, borrowing the money, doing a loan. You can also do a lease, like an operating lease, or you can do a PPA, a power purchase agreement. So we're gonna drill down on those in March, especially the lease option, which is a low cost way to ownership with uh, very low upfront costs. Here's the third project I wanted to show off today. This is Apt Electronics in Glenview, Northern Cook County. This is a 516 kW rooftop array. You can see we pretty much filled that roof with solar uh, panels or modules as they're called in the trade. And uh, this was a fairly new facility for Apt. It's 100,000 square foot um, warehouse that they added on to their flagship store. So Apt is in electronics and um, you know they sell all kinds of home appliances. But sustainability is also in their DNA. So it wasn't just about getting the, the savings and I'm going to show you some cash flows, how solar generates ROI. It's very significant. So uh, a, a rooftop array like this is producing upwards of a million dollars in savings over the course of the lifetime of the array. And then you see in the cutout here, I have a Tesla battery, which is installed just uh, next to the building. It's outdoors. This is the power pack. That's the commercial Tesla battery product. And as I mentioned earlier, batteries uh, pair very well with solar. You can also use the federal ITC, the investment tax credit, which I'm going to touch on. But that's a 30% tax credit on the cost of the uh, uh, on the cost of the equipment. So if you buy equipment for $100,000, you're getting $30,000 in the first year as a tax credit. And the batteries, when paired with solar, you can also use the tax credit on the price of the batteries. So what the batteries are doing then is extending the life uh, or the, the basically the uh, payback of the array because they store solar power during the day. And then you can discharge the battery uh, when the sun goes down and isn't shining. So it extends the period of leveraging solar energy. It also is providing grid services in the form of frequency regulation. So the, the grid operates at 60 Hertz and you want to condition that energy periodically in various places around the grid. And batteries are a great resource for that. And so literally the grid is flowing energy into and out of the, the battery leveraging it as a conditioning resource and we call that frequency regulation and for that they will pay the battery owner uh, i think the going rate is like 30 dollars a megawatt hour right now and, and so for every megawatt of uh, of ele every, every megawatt hour of electricity the battery is feeding or taking uh from the grid they're they're paying you for that all right and then finally, the IKEA distribution center in Joliet. This was ground up construction um, that we just finished this array uh, in December of 2017 here in Will County in the uh, Southwest suburbs of Chicago. And as you can see, this is a gigantic rooftop. And this is what you see in the photo here is just half of the, of the roof. If you go 
to the north on the other side of the taller part of this building, there's a whole other section of equal size. So all said, this is a 10.5 acre project. So the roof you're looking at here is five acres of rooftop. And you see there's many obstructions. These are mostly skylights and vents. This is a, a, a distribution warehouse. So it's not a retail store, but um, obviously it has a, uh, you know, an energy load and they're going to offset a big portion of that energy load. We don't know exactly how much because we're a subcontractor to a developer called SOCOR. We're often subcontracting to general um, contractors or solar developers. That's our bread and butter. We are a solar EPC. So we know how to engineer, procure, and construct solar arrays. And we will do any, uh, any or all of those pieces, including just construction. But this, uh, this array consists of 9,315 watt solar modules. And uh, IKEA, this is our third IKEA. We've built uh, IKEA retail rooftop arrays in Schaumburg and Bolingbrook. And IKEA is solarizing all of their facilities uh, nationwide. And they're doing that for a couple of reasons. Uh, Solar produces energy from sunlight. So you're getting a free fuel source. And what that does is it reduces the operating costs of the facility. So it's saving them money. But it's also, of course, reducing their carbon footprint. And today, with uh, all the air pollution that we have from coal burning power plants and the hazards of climate change that are caused by burning fossil fuels, many Fortune 500 companies are investing in solar. And we see this really among all of the large companies in the United States, Google, Facebook, um, Amazon, they're all going 100% green, Microsoft. And uh, so they all have renewable energy initiatives and, and Google, for example, is already producing all of its power via uh, renewable energy through mostly power purchase agreements. So, they buy the power from large solar farms and large wind farms. Because as you can imagine, they have a myriad of data centers around the country and around the globe that are consuming vast quantities of electricity. And they want to offset that with solar energy, which is clean and green and produces very few emissions relative to other energy sources, traditional energy sources. So now let's talk a little bit more about the five ways that solar pays back. How does solar generate ROI anyway? Why, this really explains why uh, companies and individuals are investing in solar energy systems. What you see here is a table explaining in the first five years how the energy produced by the array and the incentives and rebates will flow back to the owner. So you're buying an array, and then that array is producing energy, right? And so you have energy bill savings that are equivalent to about 20% of the value of that array in the first five years. Then we have cash incentives. In Illinois right now, we have two key cash incentives. One is called SREX, which stands for Solar Renewable Energy Credits, or SREX, much easier to say SREX. And then we have a Smart Inverter Incentive. They, the uh, grid operators would like us to use smart inverters, which have unique features like rapid shutdown and um, they can be remotely shut down. So if the grid operator has too much power on the grid right now, they can actually turn off the solar arrays remotely if they really wanted to. Now the fact is we're installing 3000 megawatts and that's a relatively small uh, amount of energy. We're going to achieve our renewable portfolio standard of 25% clean and green energy by 2025 by installing those 3,000 megawatts. So it's, it's a chunk, but it's not a massive uh, amount of power that we're bringing onto the grid. So those incentives accumulate to about 40% of the value of the, uh, of, the, of the investment. And every project is slightly different, but these are some good ball, ballpark figures. Then we have tax credits, which I mentioned earlier, the federal ITC and that stands for investment tax credit. And that, that is equivalent to 30% of the value of the array. A tax credit is like cash. It's, uh, so if you have a $100,000 tax liability, you're taking um, 
and you get a $30,000 tax credit, you're getting $30,000 off of that uh, tax liability. Finally, we have something called accelerated bonus depreciation. The rules for depreciation just changed at the end of 2017 with a new tax bill. Needless to say, this is a form of depreciation. You're buying equipment and then it depreciates in value precipitously over time. And what that means is you're able to recoup the, uh, the cost of that equipment in a relatively short amount of time. Um, and, and you can take the, the majority of this depreciation in year one now. So that accumulates to about 25% of the value of the system. And so you see at the bottom then, the system is cash positive by year five to the tune of 115%. So you've completely paid off the array and then you're, you have 15% in the black. So what does that look like uh, with, with a more tangible project? This is a Louis Joliet Mall with their permission. Um, we, uh, this is a, a rooftop array that we've drawn on the, on the roof of that mall. That's a 2.45 megawatt rooftop array. So it's a very large array. That would produce um, 2.9 gigawatt hours of electricity per year. And that translates into energy savings worth uh, about $250,000 per year. So the net result is you're uh, going to see a payback period of four years. You're going to earn back all of the money you invest in the solar array within four years. And over the 25 year lifetime of the project, you're going to get an internal rate of return of 15.6%. In the lower right hand, uh, you see the graph of the energy consumption of the facility and the green. So the blue bars are the energy consumption of the facility and then the green uh, line chart is what the solar array will produce. So you see the solar array is producing more power in the summer months and then less in the shoulder seasons and the winter and, and spring. Uh, so this solar array would not produce all of the facility's power, but it would produce upwards of 30% of the facility's power. So it's going to offset the power bill for that facility uh, very significantly. Now, the other consideration here is, the, is the, so there's really two considerations, the size of the array and the cost of electricity. So the different lines on this graph represent different costs of electricity from uh, the bottom blue line being five cents a kWh and then the top uh, green blue line being nine cents kWh. And so a small commercial system down here at the left hand side, right, we're down around uh, 100 kW, uh, solar array, and that is going to produce some savings in, to the tune of $10,000 a year. And then as the array size increases, that savings goes up, right, because the array is producing power um, corresponding to the size of the array. So it's a linear progression, right, a straight line. The bigger the array, the bigger the amount of electricity produced by the array. And then depending on the price of electricity that you pay, and everybody pays a different uh, price for electricity in Illinois, we're a deregulated state. And so all we need is a power bill, and um, then we can download your energy data from ComEd or Ameren and tell you what a rooftop or ground mount solar array will uh, be able to offset for you, what the offsetable price of power is for you. For many commercial facilities, it falls in the six to seven cents when, you're, when you take into consideration all the charges. But the take home here is um, every roof, every sunny roof that can you know, host an array can benefit. The bigger the bill, the bigger the benefit. The larger the array, the greater the savings are gonna be over time. So I mentioned the Future Energy Jobs Act that is fueling uh, this reinvigoration of the solar industry here in Illinois. Um, we have these very healthy cash incentives called SREX and Smart Inverter Incentive. And this is $200 million a year that's being collected by, apologize for the typo there in the word year, um, $200 million being collected. It is a small fee that you and I are paying on our power bill. All residents and commercial off takers in Illinois are paying a small fee um, relative to the KWH that they consume. And that's being accumulated by the utilities and then 
they are paying that out to solar system or solar plus storage system owners. The government never touches the money, so the governor cannot sweep the funds. That was a problem historically in Illinois, but is no longer a concern. And so this is real money, $200 million a year for 10 years. And that translates into about 12 to $15 billion in economic development. So this is, these are construction projects. That means jobs. It means uh, the purchase of long-term equipment. And it's, it's really a good thing for the state of Illinois and for the Midwest. And then just to reiterate, SRECs are a performance-based incentive. So for every megawatt hour of electricity that the array produces, you get one rec. And so if the array is turned off or doesn't get finished or built, it doesn't get any recs. And then the smart inverter incentive is just based on the size of the array. And it's $250 per KWH, uh, sorry, per KWDC. And that, that translates into about uh, 10, five to 10% of a project's value. So here's an actual cash flow. What does that look like uh, for a small commercial system? You have a capital expense, right? You're buying equipment. A small system, 55 kW in this case, might cost $137,500. You're seeing energy bill savings. Uh, this is just in the first five years, running the numbers there, uh, of $24,000. Cash incentives, that's SRECs and smart inverters, $66,000. The federal ITC, which is 30%, $41,000, and then accelerated depreciation, $31,000. All said and done, your five-year net savings are $26,400. So you're already in the black and producing a profit. And then over 25 years, which is the expected lifetime of the system, you're generating $121,600. Uh, so it's it's, it's a very lucrative um, purchase. And then those numbers just get magnified as you scale up. So this is what a cash flow looks like for a large uh, rooftop or ground mount array. In this case, 2,450 kW. That would be a two megawatt AC solar array. That is the largest behind the meter or community solar, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about community solar in a second, array that you can build in Illinois. That is a big purchase. It's $4.2 million. It's going to generate $918,000 in energy savings a year. And then obviously you're gonna get these other incentives that are gonna pay the array back to the tune of $930,000. You're in the black in year by year five. And then over the 25 year lifetime of the system, you're actually producing $4.8 million in positive cash flow. So who can benefit from solar PV? I like to say anyone with a sunny roof, it doesn't have to be on the roof, it can be on the ground or on the parking lot. In general, we're looking for owner-occupied facilities. And the reason for that is the facility owner is motivated to make an investment in their facility. This is a long-term investment. And, and so it is gonna reduce the power bill of whoever occupies the facility, whether that's the owner or a tenant. Tenant-occupied facilities can work, and I'm gonna talk about that, and that's more relevant to community solar in the next slide. Bigger the bill, bigger the benefit. Very simple. And we do have a rule about the roof because you're putting a semi-permanent structure on top of the roof. You want it to be less than 10 years old. So if you need to re-roof, you wanna do that before the solar goes on. New construction is great because you have a brand new roof. And ideally you can design the roof to accommodate the array and build very few obstructions into that roof. Some of the rules of thumb we're looking for, you know, big flat roofs, warehouses, factories, low rise office, schools. Buildings with angled roofs can work as well or tilted roofs, uh, you know, apartment buildings, churches, every facility is different. Um, and so if you have a question about how solar could work for your facility, please reach out to me. My contact information is at the end there. And um, you can email me or reach me on Twitter. A note about community solar, and we will do a special webinar on community solar because it is a subspecialty, but the, the bill, the Future Energy Jobs Act, 
makes community solar possible in Illinois. What that means is you have a third party owned central array, okay? And so there's no investment up front by the host. And so, and then the owner is subscribing people in, people and companies in ComEd or Ameren territory. So wherever the array is, that's where the off takers have to be. But it could be anyone in, anyone in ComEd territory. So the array could be hundreds of miles away from the subscribers. And this applies to large rooftops, brownfields, and farm ground. So solar developers are now securing leases for these types of land or rooftop to build community solar arrays. Generally speaking, they're looking for uh, 10 to 20 acres of ground or you know, uh, five to 10 acres of roof. And what this produces is uh, two forms of income. Passive income, of course, from the rent, and then also passive income from the energy savings if, if they become an off taker or a subscriber to the community array. The host could be as much as 40% of, or could consume as much as 40% of the solar array with a community array. So you have to have at least three off takers or three subscribers. And then, as I mentioned, anyone in Comet or Ameren. This is also great for people who don't want to have a or buy a solar system, uh, low income people, renters, people with shady roofs, anyone who wants solar energy but doesn't want to either make a purchase or invest in putting it on their facility. I want to let everybody know that we're doing this every last Tuesday of the month at 12 noon. Our next uh, webinar is going to be March 27th. And we have a special guest that day talking about solar finance. And that's Stan Fishbind, who is the co-founder of Clean View Capital. Stan is an industry veteran. And uh, you really uh, will benefit if you're curious about how solar is financed to uh, tune into that. And then on April 24th, we're going to have my boss, Brian Houck, who's the founder of the uh, Energy Solutions Group and the director of that group here at Continental Electric, talking about solar plus storage, which we're doing a lot of projects and is a very growing part of the solar economy. So looking forward to that. Please sign up at seco.com solar webinar. So seco.com forward slash solar webinar. I want to give a shout out to the green team here at Seco. I stand on these gentlemen's shoulders every day in my work. I could not do my job without them. Uh, Brian, who I mentioned, who's going to be giving our April event, and then Cesar Romo, who's our senior project manager and NABCEP certified installer, and then Jeff Bell, who's our other solar project manager. I work with these guys very intimately, very closely every day. They're wonderful, and many of you probably know them. So if, you're, if you have questions about solar, you can go to any of us. We all know the ins and outs of solar PV. With that, I'd uh, like to open it up to Q&A. You can uh, just chat in your questions uh, with, the, uh, with the Zoom interface. Um, we have about, gosh, 27 uh, participants on the call today, so that's great. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, I'm Tim Montague. I do solar sales and business development here at Continental. Uh, there's my email, tmontague at seco.com and my phone number 217-722-0429. You can also reach me on Twitter, TG Montague. So with that, I will open it up to questions. And for those of you who have to sign off, have a great afternoon. Look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. And please uh, don't hesitate to follow up with us with a phone call or email. We love to answer questions. All right, so. From Kerry Tisch, I'm familiar with a program in Germany where a third party leases industrial roof space for solar rays. And in addition to the lease payments to the roof lord or the 
roof owner, the property owner also can access power generated on site at a discounted cost. Is such a program available here? Well, great question, Carrie. And yes, the answer is Community Solar is the program that makes that scenario a realistic, uh, a reality here in Illinois. So you have a large roof, you want to rent that roof to a solar developer who will build, own, and operate a community solar array, and then you become a subscriber to that as well. So you can offset your power consumption in your facility to the tune of 40% of what that array produces. Um, and, and you will you will be given a discount, typically 10 to 15% over what you're paying retail rate. So you're going to see a discount on the power you're buying from the solar array, and then you'll get passive income by leasing or renting your rooftop. Carrie goes on, my understanding is that if you're on, uh, oops. My understanding is, I wanna get the screen share back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. You can't use solar power or battery stored power during a power interruption because the utility wants to avoid any possibility of backfeeding. Yeah, so that was what I was referring to where if the grid, if you have a grid tied solar array, it will shut off automatically when the grid goes down. If you have the proper hardware to island in a microgrid, and that requires a generation source, either a generator or a battery, um, and then you can uh, island the microgrid and have a self-sustaining system powering some percentage, not likely the 100% of your uh, facility, but some percentage. Question here from Irene. Can you get frequency reg uh, regulation revenue in facilities in MISO or just in PJM? Does the meter really run backwards or do you install a reverse flow meter? So uh, a couple questions there. Frequency regulation is available both in MISO and PJM, but it's really much more bankable in PJM. MISO, uh, so the, the grid is divided into these super regions and they're called regional transmission organizations. In Northern Illinois, it's PJM, and in Southern Illinois, or in Ameren Territory, it's MISO. So in PJM here in Northern Illinois, where we are, uh, like I mentioned earlier, they are paying about $30 megawatt hour. Now, that rate is going to fluctuate up and down. So it is, tr it is not truly bankable, but it is uh, much better than what we anticipate in MISO currently where we expect about $15 an hour or half of that. Now, the rules for storage are changing and FERC, which is the federal organization, um, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which uh, um, oversees all of these RTOs, so it oversees MISO and PJM, is uh, asking all of the RTOs to, to uh, basically play nice with storage. So we're, we're gonna see a lot of evolution of the grid with regards to storage in coming years. All right, well, I hope more of you will ask questions. Um, right now, there's no questions in the chat, so don't hold back. You can also email me at tmontague at cecco.com. Uh, you should have received an email from me already when you registered, so I should be in your inbox. Feel free to reach out to me by email or phone. Um, we love doing assessments. So if you have a facility and you're just curious, what could solar do for me? I'm happy to give you a free assessment. All I need is a PDF of your ComEd bill or your Ameren bill and then your third party supplier. Because we are deregulated, many people have a third party supplier, not all. ComEd will sell you the KWH as well. But many people have a third party supplier. We need to see those bills and then we can recreate the rate that you're paying in a tool we call uh, Energy Toolbase. That's a software as a service we use to an analyze energy data and produce cash flows. And then we'll design a rooftop array on your facility using Helioscope, which is a state-of-the-art design tool. I can design a rooftop array in uh, 15 minutes. 
and uh, and then we're off to the races and you can find out what solar could or could not do for you uh, it doesn't make sense for everybody if you're paying a very very low price let's say you're paying two cents a kwh for so uh, for grid energy then it means that the payback period will be extended so you might have a 10-year payback instead of a, a three to five year payback of course it will still pay back in the long run um, it just most people want to see a shorter payback period and that's why we're so excited about the uh, the incentives right now because that puts us in the three to six year zone for the payback period and it's really a new day for solar and that's the purpose of these incentives because we do have a renewable portfolio standard that says we're going to achieve 25 percent clean power by 2025 and before we had fija that process was pretty much broken uh, and we were not on track to achieve the 25 percent goal question from irene is the itc for solar expiring good question irene the itc is being phased out starting in 2020 so it's 2018 now, so we have two more good years. We have, uh, well, two or three more good years, but it starts phasing out in 2020 and goes down to 10% in 2022 for commercial. It's gonna go away entirely for residential. So all these incentives I've been talking about also apply to residential. We don't do residential solar here at Continental, but we're happy to refer you to uh, a, solar, a residential solar installer if you wanna do that with your residents. So yes, there is a window that is closing for these incentives, just like the ITC. That 30% is a very hefty incentive and it's gonna go away starting in 2020. So if you're gonna do solar, it's better to do it in the next three years or next two years. The other thing about the Fiji incentives is it's, an, it's what we call a declining block. So the incentives are stronger at the beginning of the program to incentivize buy-in and then it's going to staircase down or trap down, step down, excuse me, over time, as we reach that goal of 25% clean power, they're gonna, they're gonna step down the incentives because you need stronger incentives at the beginning. Like I said early in the presentation, we only have about 100 megawatts of solar in Illinois today. We're going to install 3,000, so it's a very large uh, increase in solar that we want to jumpstart. And the way to do that is with these SREX and smart inverter incentives. And it works. Keep the questions coming. That was a good one. Feel free to uh, sign off if you need to go about your day. We are going to post a recording of this on our website and um, I will send you an email with the link to that when that gets done in the next couple of days. So you can share it with your friends and colleagues. We very much want you to talk to your friends and colleagues. Most people in Illinois don't know what solar PV is or how it works. And so please point them to this webinar as a source. We also have a blog on our website. If you just Google SECO blog, you'll find the SECO Energy blog where we talk about projects, we talk about uh, these incentives and how solar works for Illinois. So another question, uh, can only Illinois facilities earn SREX? Technically, FIJA will apply to neighboring states. So you could have a solar facility in Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Indiana, and it can, it can um, bid into the Illinois market. It, I don't think it's guaranteed approval, um, but, um, but those states are able to uh, at least apply for SREX in the Illinois market. And I don't know the ins and outs of those. If you go to the IPA WIPS website, the Illinois Power Agency is the agency that oversees renewable energy in Illinois, the IPA, Illinois Power Agency. If you just Google that, you'll find it. They have a very hefty document that spells out all the rules that are being considered now and that are going to be written into law starting in April. That's the kind of, uh, finalization of FIJA coming into force on April 3rd, and then we're really off to the races. So from Caesar, uh, my colleague and project manager, how does Illinois rate in solar rebates and installations versus the rest of the country? Very good question, Caesar. I was just looking at the uh, top 10 rankings for solar jobs, and that, of course, corresponds to the amount of installed solar. So we have California at the top, 
which has 20,000 megawatts of installed solar. So even after we install 3,000, we're still going to be a baby compared to the big dog California. But um, California is a market that is starting to mature, so it's starting to asymptote. It was going through very rapid growth and now it's starting to slow down. And so those California companies have been there, done that, learned how to do solar. They're bringing that expertise to, to Illinois now and we welcome them with open arms because we need their expertise, their talent, and their uh, professionalism. So then we have states like uh, North Carolina, a lot of ground mount utility scale solar. Uh, Massachusetts has done very well with community solar. New York State, the same thing. These are places where the cost of power is three times what it is in Illinois. And so that's why solar makes so much more financial sense and it, and it has driven the market in those places. Florida and Texas are also top markets. Those are mostly utility scale markets, but a combination, rooftop, ground mount, and uh, small and large. So that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. There really are no Midwestern states in the top 10. Illinois might eke its way into the top 10, depending on what's going on. Here in the Midwest, Minnesota is probably the leader. They adopted uh, community solar and have been doing these, you know, a megawatt to two megawatt community solar projects. And we're, our law is uh, modeled after the uh, Minnesota law, but also Massachusetts um, and New York. New Jersey is also a top state. So um, go to the East Coast, the New York region, you'll see a lot of solar, and then the Boston region, um, and then anywhere in California. Colorado, Arizona, um, some of the states out west are also good solar states. Um, and then we're playing catch up, but we're going to start nipping at their heels. All right, well, I think we'll, uh, we'll end the webinar. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us. We look forward to seeing you uh, in the future and check out our website, seco.com, C-E-C-C-O.com. I'm Tim Montague. Have a great day.